Hi there, in this video I'm going to be reviewing this, the uh, new 5th generation 12.9 inch uh, M1 iPad Pro. Uh, now I've had this for a couple of months, I bought it as soon as it came out and I do absolutely love it. I'm a huge fan of the uh, iPad Pro, I've had one since the first generation. Uh, it's one of my uh, key devices that I use for both work and play. And uh, as you'd expect, this latest model is, is the best yet. Now this is simply the, the base model, that it's 128 gigabyte storage and um, Wi-Fi only, I don't need 5G. Uh, in fact this one cost uh, 999 pounds, which is not uh, uh, a small sum. Fortunately I didn't also have to buy the Magic Keyboard and the Apple Pencil, I already had those. And if you really, you really do need both those things, um, certainly the pencil, if you're going to get the most out of this uh, of the iPad Pro. As I say, I didn't have to buy those. If I had, if you do have to buy those as well, to turn the iPad Pro into a, what's, what's usually called a laptop replacement, you're talking about almost another £500, so it isn't a cheap device. However, if uh, you uh, like Apple devices, if you like iPads, then you're going to love this. Now looking at the design, uh, you can see that it's, in fact, it's almost identical in size and appearance to the fourth and third generation models. Apparently it's very slightly heavier and thicker, but you'd never really notice that. In fact, there was, in fact, uh, some initial concern that this extra thickness meant that it wouldn't fit the existing Magic Keyboard. But that concern was quickly dispelled by Apple, much to the relief of people like me who had already purchased uh, one of the Magic Keyboards previously. Uh, and as you can see here, I'll show you, it does uh, fit perfectly and work perfectly. Uh, this one is the Space Grey model. Uh, you can also get it in silver. As yet, Apple haven't started uh, using the, the uh, colours that, that they, you can now see on the new uh, iMac 24-inch uh, models. Um, it comes in different capacities. So this is the 128 gigabyte. You can also get 256, 512 gigabyte, 1 terabyte or 2 terabyte. Um, the 126, 256 and 512 gigabyte models come with 8 gigabyte of RAM. The 1 and 2 terabyte models have 16 gigabyte of RAM. Now the M1 chip inside is the 8 core CPU, 8 core GPU one that you get in the Mac Mini or the 13 inch MacBook Pro or the higher-end uh, iMacs and, and MacBook Airs. Okay, what do I think is really good about this uh, new uh, iPad Pro model? Well, firstly, you'd have to mention, of course, the um, display. Uh, it's, of course, a mini um, LED display um, with an incredible contrast ratio of 1 million to 1 which means, of course, it has super deep blacks and very bright highlights. Uh, this makes it perfect for uh, watching movies, especially HDR movies. But I also use it for editing videos and editing photos. It's excellent for that as well. The other um, new feature is the, where is it? Is the Thunderbolt uh, 3 USB-C 4 uh, port. Uh, which you now have. The previous models had the just USB-C. Um, now this again is the same port obviously as on the uh, Mac Mini and so on. Um, and uh, what it means of course is that the uh, extension capabilities of the iPad have been um, improved or increased. Um, you can be able to attach faster uh, external drives uh, now or, or some of the new Thunderbolt hubs that are, that are becoming available to, to really increase the number of uh, expansion slots uh, or ports rather. Um, and of course you can also attach a USB-C monitor um, or a Thunderbolt monitor if those things exist. There is a problem with that in that um, it, when you attach that external monitor uh, you, still, you still see the um, iPad screen in its in the in the resolution, which I think is basically four to three, uh, whereas it, where most monitors are sixteen to nine, and so you end up with these black bars either side. That's something Apple needs to fix, I think. 
Don't forget, of course, that I mentioned the Apple Pencil support. The Apple Pencil is by far the best um, point, uh, writing, drawing device uh, on, on tablets. It's uh, easily the best. The Apple Pen if you've ever used the Apple Pencil with an iPad, you'll know how good it is. It's, the latency is virtually zero. Um, it's smooth. Everything about it is fantastic. I uh, use my iPad Pro all the time with the pencil for taking notes and for drawing diagrams. Uh, in apps like OneNote and Affinity Designer. Um, of course, spatial audio is available on the iPad Pro, uh, provided you've got uh, appropriate headphones. Once again, Apple's own AirPods Pro and AirPods Max tend to be the best. Uh, and of course, don't forget the um, fabulous uh, App Store. There are hundreds, of course, of, of superb apps available for the iPad. Again, probably better than, than any other tablet, uh, non-Apple uh, non tablet around. Well, those are the good points. What about the bad points? Well, there are a number uh, which I think need to be pointed out. Um, firstly, of course, there is the price. It is a very expensive device. I so, say so this base model uh, cost a grand. Um, if you start going uh, increasing the storage, uh, and adding 5G, then the price really shoots up. And if you, I mean, a fully loaded iPad Pro, that is uh, with two terabyte of storage and 5G, costs, I believe, two thousand hundred and forty-nine pounds here in the UK. And of course, if you did uh, didn't have the pencil and the keyboard, which say you really do need if you're going to uh, make the most of it, add on another nearly five hundred. It's almost coming up to you know, approaching three grand, which is an incredible amount of, of money. The other limitation which still exists, which many people are disappointed about, is the fact that the even with the latest version of iPad OS or iPad OS 15, the software still does lag behind the capability of the hardware. I mean this the hardware just keeps getting better and better. Say so now you've got the M1 uh, chip, you've got a Thunderbolt port, you've got the mini LED display and so on. Uh, the software, uh, iPadOS, although it's improved in recent years with better multitasking features and so on, many people would argue rightly, I think, that it still fails to make the most of the incredibly good hardware that's available on this device. Uh, a lot of people were, were hoping that with the uh, introduction of the M1 chip that possibly even macOS would... Uh, become available to be to be run on the iPad Pro uh, or at the very least that some of the key uh, Pro apps like Final Cut Pro, uh, Logic Pro and so on would be uh, would now have iPad versions. Well neither of those things has come to pass and to be honest I'm not sure that they will. Um, the final uh, downside, if you like, the disadvantage of this that I'd mention is its file handling. This still lags way behind what you'd expect on a desktop machine, what you get on the Finder on macOS, for example. The Files app on here um, is still very limited in what it can, what it can do. Um, of course, it's only fairly recently that they even had a Files app so that you could uh, handle external drives and so on. But um, well, it, it exists, but it's it, and you can use it, uh, but it's still very uh, rudimentary in many in in, uh, in many ways. For example, there's there's no um, you cannot um, eject external SSDs, although you can use external SSDs, uh, and they do work quite well um, or very well most most of the time. There is no facility to eject them, so I have heard reports of people. Uh, finding that the uh, external uh, drives have been corrupted uh, because uh, they weren't able to properly eject them. I haven't had that problem, I must say. Um, the other thing about file handling is for some reason, even though it's got the same M1 chip and the same Thunderbolt port, file transfers are noticeably slower uh, than with an ex external SSD than you, than you get on, for example, my, uh, my M1 MacBook Air. Now I did some tests uh, of, of um, copying to and from uh, the iPad um, 
a 4.66 4 gigabyte um, movie file, MP4 file, uh, comparing it with uh, the MacBook Air, and uh, here are the results. And as you can see, the uh, iPad Pro uh, times are noticeably significantly slower for some reason. Uh, now this is not just uh, with on my uh, uh, iPad. I've seen other uh, reviews that have looked at this and come to similar conclusions. Um, the speeds are still very good, but they're nowhere near as good as the um, uh, MacBook Air for some reason. Okay, finally, is the usual question about is it worth the money? Well, again, as I mentioned before in other videos, if you're a big Apple fan as I am, and if you really like the iPad, then although it's very expensive, it is a superb device, beautifully made, uh, fabulous display, wonderful uh, hardware, uh, the software has limitations, but still very, very useful, then it is worth paying that price. You're getting a, a, a premium device, uh, which is better than any other tablet on the market. On the other hand, if you are not, if you already have a, a fourth generation or a third generation, um, this really doesn't do much more than those uh, currently do. Uh, you are getting a better display, but not it's better, but it's not sort of uh, massively better. Um, and certainly if you're not uh, a big Apple fan and you, you don't uh, heavily into the Apple ecosystem, then you probably wouldn't need to buy to, to pay the money to buy. Uh, a device of this uh, price.